It surrounds everything in life, and in fact, it imitates life. You see, what we oftentimes don't realize is that we live under a canvas. A beautiful canvas constructed out of cement, brick, and mortar. And yet sometimes, these canvases go unnoticed. You see, architecture is an art, and the architects are the artists. And William Adair Bernudi is St. Louis's unsung artist. So it was in about 1930s, and Bernudi had dropped out of Washington University School of Architecture and joined the famous Frank Lloyd Wright at his Tallison house. Here, Bernudi would work one-on-one -on -one with Wright and pick up some architectural tricks while also adding some of his own. You see, Wright's vision was something akin to Bernudi's. It was a vision of harmony. It was a vision that sought the union between architecture and nature. Throughout the years, architecture has been a sign of the times. See, ranging from the Greek to the Gothic eras, architecture and its archetypes speak volumes about society and its influences. St. Louis, like any city, has its own architectural story. Characterized by heavy German, Victorian, and now more modern styles. You see, like any city, St. Louis has a very immense architectural potential. A potential that is all too often overlooked and forgotten, left in the dust of a movement towards bigger and more tasteless houses. If there is one person who St. Louis should mirror in terms of architecture, it was and still is. William Bernoudi. See, in 1938, Bernoudi paired up with friend and architect Edouard Mutrux to form a partnership, eventually to be called Mutrux and Bernoudi. In 1946, Bernoudi received his architectural license and began to design and build a series of houses in Ladue. These houses, of course, featured natural elements in harmony with the land around them. See, ranging from houses churches, and even sculptures, Bernoudi did it all and did it uniquely. While there aren't many physical or online resources about Bernoudi, there still exists a handful of passionate experts on the subject. For now, let's go take a trip to Bernoudi's own home, where we'll meet our first expert. Hi, my name is Ted White, and I'm a real estate agent with Dealman Sotheby's International Realty. And um, I bought this house for my mother um, about eight years ago. Um, my mom and dad had bought this home from the Bernoudi estate when Mrs. Bernoudi passed away. Bernoudi built this house in 1954 for himself and his mother, seeking to merge nature with architecture. Bernoudi's work is evident. This house sits in a lush, nestled corner of Ladue and is an excellent example of Bernoudi's vision. While the house on paper is a smaller house, it truly does showcase Bernoudi's masterful and deliberate use of space. This is a ranch home, but I would call it more of an architectural home. Um, so it was designed and built by William Bernoudi himself. Um, so, it, and when my parents bought this house, it was, um, I really came to appreciate it more and more and appreciate the architecture and, um, you know, understanding it more. And it's, um, it's a change, like, to, you know, to embrace a house like this, it's, it's, it's wonderful. You really appreciate it every day. I have coffee here every morning. I look out to the windows that go into the yard, um, every day, um, in the summertime, I have coffee on the cantilever um, patio, and um, it really is a house where you know you appreciate the outdoors. The outdoors is as as important as the indoors in this home. Something that truly distinguishes Bernoudi from the rest of St. Louis's architects is his deliberation and intent, always taking into consideration the wishes of his clients and the natural world. Bernoudi wanted more than just a brick and mortar house. He saw a purpose. Um, so William Bernoudi was 
again, he, he really built like a solid house with just wonderful details and built, he's known for like built-ins and um, so he really is one of the best. There are some other wonderful architects in St. Louis, but sort of the Bernudi aesthetic, you know, is most appealing to me. Bernudi's aesthetic is certainly one that is carefully planned out. It is nothing short of architectural genius, but how does he do it and why is it so important? Design, as you can see, is more important than just having big windows and an open floor plan. Um, is have more thought. And you can see, like in this home, it's like the idea is to bring the outdoors in, where you have a brick patio that goes into like a brick tile in the living room. So it's sort of the seamless idea um, of joining um, the outdoors and the indoors. To truly appreciate Bernudi's homes, you have to engage in the entire design, both inside and outside. See, Bernoulli's style was much more in tune towards purpose than the disappointing and haphazard architecture of today. This is Mr. Marcus Aitley, Mark an, an architect, architect at Maggie Mitchell Architects Mitchell. here in St. Louis. Seeing that Mr. Adrian is an architect, I figured I would turn towards him in my quest to answer the fundamental question. Why is deliberation important in architecture? So you had this, um, this not just a machine, machine aesthetic, but a machined aesthetic of houses that had to be mass, mass produced. So of course they all look like each other, you know, just, just chunk these things out and they all look the same because that's how you make them economical. And that's how you can build so many thousands and millions of them at the same time is you just make them all the same. They're all, you know, so I think part of it was a reaction to that also, of creating um, uh, homes that were more uh, signature, more designed, and, and more one of a kind. Those one of a kind houses are still hard to come by even today. Bernoulli's style completely opposed the monotony of building architecture. Instead, he turned towards a more mathematical and natural philosophy. Can see what you can see in Bernoulli's work is an emphasis on the organic and the geometric, which are, are influences that trace directly to right, but um, but not exclusively to right. And I think you could trace even further back from there, from right to Sullivan, of that that ethic of um, uh, organic geometry and simplicity. Too often, what we see in modern architecture is design without purpose. What often gets overlooked is the fact that solidarity can and must coexist within design. When you're designing for someone, whether it's a person or a family or an organization, you're taking into account exactly what their needs are because you're designing it for them. You're not designing it for history. You're not designing it for the books. You're not designing it for posterity necessarily, unless you're already famous. And we can point to the architects who are doing that and I think when they do that, their work is not as good. Even the famous architects, their work is better when they're in the mode of designing for a particular person or a particular client and understanding perfectly their needs. And if you can make the building an expression of their functional needs and also an expression of their spirit and their character uh, and maybe even their tastes to some extent, um, then I, I think that's always gonna be Architecture that is constrained by, um, that, that's shaped by those kinds of constraints is always going to be better design. Because design is simply a response to those constraints. In our time, more and more people are focused on having big, flashy homes with no true design or purpose. Homes that appeal to luxury and greed. A slap in the face to architecture itself. What we have seen is the fact that Bernoulli has done the exact opposite of this. Instead, he's brought meaningful architecture, which is an art form that has been, and always should be, one that continues to inspire. Inspiring us to move away from the monotony of life, and instead move towards, and in fact embrace, the beauty of the natural.